everyone. Today in this video, we are going to be working in our math notebook to represent each of the ways of multiplication that we are going to learn in topic three. There will be lots of note taking today. So get your fingers all exercised, get out your markers or anything that you're going to use today and follow along with me. If I'm moving too fast, you can always pause the video and go back to it at your own pace. So I started here with the next blank page in my math notebook, and I am going to write, I'm kind of going in the middle of the page, and I'm gonna write multiplication multiple ways. So we talked yesterday about how we're going to learn various strategies for multiplying two digit by one digit or three digit by one digit numbers. And while I'm teaching you all of these different ways, you are only going to have to pick one of the ways to use on our topic three test. So one of these strategies might just like stand out for you. You might be like, oh, I love that strategy or I love that strategy. There might be some strategies that you think are dumb and you're like, this strategy is really not for me. And that's okay too. But as your teacher, it is my job to show you each strategy so that you are aware of it. And then you're gonna pick your best one, your favorite one, and that's the one that you can stick with. So the first strategy that we're going to be talking about, make my arrow, is the standard algorithm. Now the standard algorithm is the one that your parents probably learned when they were in school. It's the one that I learned when I was in school also. The standard algorithm. Try to make this a little bit fancier. There we go. This is my favorite. I'm gonna draw a heart next to this one because I love the standard algorithm. I just think it's the best way just because um, it's quick and easy. But there are also some other great strategies out there. Another strategy that we're going to be talking about this year is the area model. And the area model is the model that we're gonna be drawing like a box. That's the area model. And that's a good one too. We also have, I'm gonna go on the bottom here now. We also have the array method. Yep, where's my blue marker? Okay, and drawing an array is kind of like drawing out those base 10 blocks. We also have, I'm gonna draw a larger arrow here at the bottom, the distributive property. And sometimes, this is called expanded form. So I'm gonna write AKA, that stands for also known as expanded form. Expanded form. Okay. So, so far I have, if you look up at the top, the standard algorithm, the area model, arrays, distributive property, and there's one more. I have to say, if there was going to be a second favorite of mine, it would probably this be this next one, which is partial products. Okay, so we're gonna be learning all of these five ways to multiply. And guess what? Most teachers would spend one day teaching each of these separate ways. But me, nope, I'm gonna teach them all to you at the same time. So our lesson today may be a little overwhelming, but I really truly feel I've taught this topic so many different times before 
And I feel like the best way to have a deep understanding of how all of these uh, strategies fit together is to showcase them all at the same time so that you can see them each um, quickly and then we can kind of go back to them and spend a little bit of time on them individually after this. Okay, so it's gonna be a lot to take in today, but you're gonna do just fine. Remember, pause the video if you need to. Okay, so we're gonna turn our page. I actually got marker on this page. So I'm gonna use this page as my, my little backup so I don't get marker on the other ones. So I don't like writing on the backs of my papers just because I feel like the, the marker came through. Okay, so our very first strategy, my favorite, is the standard algorithm. So at the top, we're gonna write standard algorithm. Sounds so fancy, right? But really, we know that an algorithm is just a simple series of steps that you take for solving a math problem. So it's not so scary after all. And when something is standard, that means it's basic, right? It's just your regular way of doing it. So I'm going to just do one problem here for you. And I'm going to pick one that has a four digit by a one digit number. So we're going to do 2,400. 39, and I'm writing pretty big because I'm only going to show one method on each page, times, let's do eight. All right, so now that we have our problem set up, we're always going to start in the lower um, right-hand corner, right, all the way in our ones place, and we're going to be kind of like multiplying up and out is the way I like to think of it. So we're going to multiply eight times nine first, so I like to put a little arrow. I won't do this normally, but just to take notes and solve for help you. So eight times nine is 72. Now, if you didn't already know that, where could you look? Oh, how about on one of those pieces of paper that Mrs. Atkinson stuck in our folder, right? So these, this is where it's some, sometimes helpful to have one of these charts available to you. So nine times eight or eight times nine is 72. You're going to put the seven up at the top and the two at the bottom. So you're regrouping the seven or the 7D. I'm gonna switch my colors. And now I'm going to do eight times three. Eight times three, hmm, oh, that's 24. And then there's this seven up at the top, right? So I'm going to add, yes, I said add, on the seven. So eight times three is 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So I'm gonna get 31. I'm going to regroup my three and put my one down below. Okay, you with me so far? I'm going to switch my color and I am going to pick red. And now I'm going to do eight times four. Hmm, eight times four is 32 plus three. So let's see, 32, 33, 34, 35. Put my three up here, my five down below. Notice how I'm trying to keep a nice straight, you know, nice straight columns according to place value. And last, I am going to do eight times two, so I'm gonna draw my little arrow. Eight times two is 16, 17, 18, 19, because I'm gonna add on that three. So I'm gonna, there's nothing to regroup, so I'm gonna put the one and the nine down below. And then I am going to insert my comma. Remember, I start at the invisible decimal point that is located at the end of every number. And I'm gonna count one, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma. So we're gonna make our comma right here, bringing our final answer to 1,000, I'm sorry, 19,512. And last but not least, I'm going to circle my answer. And you guys know that a group of every three digits is called a period, right? Remember that? Excellent, so that's the standard algorithm. When you actually do it, you don't have to draw all these arrows, but I just wanted to show you how that was done. All right, moving on. The next model that I would like to show you today is called the area model of multiplication. So let's do that one next. At the top of your paper, 
you're going to write the words area model. All right, and we are going to be multiplying seven times 4,293. Now, you're going to notice that it's written horizontally. All right, now we could, if we didn't want to use the area model, just move this 7 over here and multiply using the standard algorithm, algorithm which we just learned. But they want us to use the area model, so here's what we do for that. The area model is the box model, I call it, or the rectangle, or whatever you want to call it. You're going to have to draw a box, a square, a rectangle. Now, you're going to put this single digit over on the side. So I'm going to put that on this side. And the larger digit gets broken up over the top of this box. But instead of just writing the number, I'm actually going to separate it into its values. So this 4 really isn't a 4. It's a 4,000. So I'm going to write 4,000. And then I'm going to make a little line there. This 2 isn't just a 2, it's a 200. The 9 isn't just a 9, it's a 90, because it's in that 10s place. And that 3, well, honey, you're just a 3. So we're going to put you right there, just a 3. All right, now comes the fun part. I sometimes like to imagine that there is like a tiny multiplication sign, like right at the edge, right? And it's kind of like that um, multiplication chart, the one here, where we take our finger and we kind of move it along. It's the same idea there. So if I have 4,000 times 7, wow, I could do that in my head, right? I know 7 times 4 is 28, right? 7 times 4 is 28. And then 1, 2, 3 zeros there. So 1, 2, 3 zeros here. All right, let's do the next box. 7 times 200. Well, I know my basic fact, 7 times 2 is 14. And then I have two zeros, so I add two zeros. 7 times 90. Hmm. Well, 7 times 9 is 63. And then I would have to add on that one zero. And finally, 7 times 3. Oh, I know that. 7 times 3 is 21. So now I have these four numbers, and now I just have to add them up. And if I add them up, then I'll get my answer. So, let's see, I have, I'm going to do it nice and neat. I have 2,800, or 28,000, I'm sorry, 28,000. I have 1,400, and one of really the trickiest part about this is making sure that you're lining up your numbers, right? Nice and neat and place value. I have 630. And I have 21. And now I'm going to add it up. I'm going to just take my pencil. I just want to kind of you guys to actually see how neat this actually is. Right? You really should try really hard to make sure that you are writing neatly. And now I'm ready to add. So starting in my ones column, one plus nothing plus nothing plus nothing is still going to be one. I have a three plus a two, which would be a five. Six plus four, which would be ten. 8 plus 2, which would also be 10, and 2 plus 1, which would be 3. Where do I put my comma? Let's start at our invisible decimal point. 1, 2, 3, comma. And our final answer is 30,051. Circle it. So pretty cool. Now, I could have also gotten the same answer. Like, look at all the work that I just did, folks, right, with this area model. I could have also gotten the same answer just by doing a standard algorithm, and it could be much quicker. Watch this. I'm just going to do it on the side. 4, 2, 9, 3 
times 7. 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times 9 is 63. 64, 65. 7 times 2 is 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 7 times 4 is 28, 29, 30. Done. So see how we got the same answer? Standard algorithm is just a little bit faster. Okay, a lot faster. All right, our next model is the array method. <laughs> this is probably the one that I like the least because it doesn't always work for big numbers. It's really good if you have like just like some like easy numbers, like lower digits. Uh, let's take a look at it. So at the top of your paper, I would like you to write array. And an array is simply, like I know you've heard about the word before in math, it's simply like a um, way to show numbers using their base 10 um, values. So those base 10 blocks or drawing something that's like kind of in a grid pattern, a repeating pattern, like that. So let's pretend we had this problem. Three times, I don't know, 243, we will say. So you guys know those base 10 blocks, right? They're like the green blocks, right? So first thing we want to do is take our big number, so 243, and represent that one time using base 10 blocks. So I'm going to use green since our base 10 blocks are usually green. And this is saying 200. So hundreds in those base 10s look like those just boxes, right? They're the flat ones. And then 4, 40, right, which would be 4 tens. So I'm going to represent that by just drawing uh, little sticks as my tens. And then 3 ones. So you can either do dots. Sometimes I like to do like little X's. Okay. So do you agree that this array here says 2 hundreds, 4 tens, 3 ones. So 241. Yes? Awesome. So I just did it one time right there. But how many times do I have to actually do this? That's right, folks, three times, because I'm multiplying 243 times three. So let's do it two more times, right? So 243. One more time. 243. And now I just add it up. So I'm going to put my plus sign, draw my line. And it's kind of cool how this works. So I'm going to start, just like if this were actual numbers, I'm going to start in my ones column and count up all of my uh, ones. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine ones, right? And I could actually draw it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine ones. And how many tens do I have here? Let's count them. Let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hmm. So if I have twelve tens, right? Think about that, guys. Twelve tens, right? What does that mean? Right? Can I take 10 of these tens and regroup it as 100? Right? It's almost like taking, if I have 12 tens, I could take 10 tens, regroup that, I'm going to put 100 up at the top, and that would leave me with two tens left. Right? And so now that I'm set to do my hundreds, I'm going to count up how many hundreds I have. I have the one that I regroup. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven hundreds. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my final answer is 729. Pretty neat how that works, right? And that is the array method. Again, it tends to only work because when you have like lower numbers, because think about it, if this was a 943, 
can you imagine having to draw nine boxes here and then another nine boxes here? Like it takes a long time to do array, but it works nicely if it's a lower, lower digits. So that's array. As you can see, it's time consuming and very pictorial. Some kids, um, you know, might like it and then other people may not and that's okay. Let's turn that page and I'm ready to show you distributive property. A few more different ways to multiply. At the top of your page, sorry guys, you're going to write distributive property. Another name for distributive property, some people also call it um, or refer to it as the expanded form. So I'm going to do AKA expanded form. You'll notice our book, Savis, um, calls it distributive property. And the packet, our topic three packet, is going to call it expanded form. So it's the same thing, just two different names. So let's pretend that we had the problem four times 7,256. Let's just say. All right. So the distributive property states that we can multiply our main number, like four, to the different values that these digits represent in our larger number. So it kind of looks like this. It has a lot of parentheses, some plus signs to it, and it basically goes like this. So we're saying four times, and then in parentheses, that's not just a seven, it's a 7,000, plus that's not just a two, it's a 200, plus that's not just a five, it's a 50, plus six. Right, so that's the first step. And that is the same, right? This is the same as that. So when we multiply it, these should be the same. Now we're gonna break it up a little bit further. My same colors. And now we're going to distribute this four to each of these things. So it's almost like you're saying four times 7,000. And then you're gonna distribute that four to 200. And then you're gonna distribute that four to the 50. And then you're gonna distribute that four to the six, right? And we're gonna multiply it each time. So we're gonna start over here. I'm starting over at the edge because this is gonna be a really long number sentence here. We're doing four times 7,000 plus four times 200 plus four times 50 plus four times six. Whew, I just made it. <laughs> Look at that, right to the edge of the page. Now the next thing I wanna do, I like to just bring down my pluses. Okay. And now I'm gonna do the easy part. It's just solving what's in the parentheses. So four times 7,000, well, I can do that. Four times seven is 28, right? And three zeros. Four times 200, well, four times two is eight, and then two zeros. Four times 50, well, four times five is 20, and then add on a zero. And four times six, I know that's 24. My very last step is to add all of these up, and then I have my answer. So I'm going to add 28,000 to 800 to 200 and 24. Okay. Oh, sorry guys, didn't realize you couldn't see that. And now I'm going to start at my ones column and add. And my final answer should be 29,024. Circle it. And there you go. 
All right, distributive property. As you can see, it has a lot. There's a lot of writing. I could have just solved it using the standard algorithm much faster, but I want you to see how this works. And who knows, maybe there's someone out there that is just in love with the distributive property. And it's all that you want to do from now on. It's possible. The next, actually, this is our last one. Woo, last one, guys. Partial products. So at the top, we are writing our title, partial products. All right, partial products isn't too bad. I actually kind of like this guy. So let's pretend we had 7,496 times eight. Okay. Partial products is basically you're multiplying kind of, I mean, it, honestly, guys, it all kind of connects because you're multiplying by the value, just like we were in distributive property, right? So first we're going to do eight times 7,000 because it's almost opposite because normally in standard algorithm, we'd go up and we'd go eight times six and then eight times nine and then eight times four and then eight times seven. In partial products, we reverse the order. So we start by going eight times seven first. So I like to write it on the side and it's not the seven really, it's eight times 7,000 because this value of the seven is a 7,000. So eight times 7,000, right? And if you think about it, eight times seven is 56 plus three zeros. So 56 plus three zeros, All right? I'm gonna get a new color. And then you would do eight times four, but this isn't just a four, it's a 400. So I like to write it on the side, eight times 400. And we know eight times 400, well, eight times four is 32 plus another two zeros. So be careful where you write it. 32 plus another two zeros would look like that. Then we have eight times nine, but this is really eight times 90 because that nine resides in the tenths place. So we have eight times 90. I know eight times nine is 72 plus one zero would be 70, I'm sorry, 720. And finally, we have eight times six, and that is actually just eight times six. This is my favorite multiplication fact. Six times eight is 48. I love it. So I'm gonna put 48 down, and now I'm ready to add up. All of these are called partial products, each one of these. And now I'm gonna add it up. So I have an eight, four plus two is six, seven plus two is nine, six plus three, six, seven, eight, nine is also nine, and five plus nothing is five, bringing my answer to 59,968. And last but not least, I am going to circle my answer. So there you have it, folks, all the different ways to multiply. Now, I know that was a lot to take in. I'm not expecting you to know how to do each method after just one lesson today, but I wanted you to have an overview so you had an idea and something to refer back to. We are going to be going over all of these different methods of multiplication individually as we move throughout our topic. Take care, everyone. figure out how to shut it off.